Hi everyone and welcome to September the 13th, 2021. I hope you're all doing well wherever you are in the world. In case you didn't know already, I am now in Belgrade in Serbia once again for about the fourth time. What is this, Mexico? And today is a sit down talking video. But before we get started, take a moment to listen. Silence, right? There are no Mexi dogs attacking me. There are no motorbikes going past at ridiculously unreasonable volumes. There are no unexplained gas explosions in apartments above me. And more than anything, there is definitely not any Si compran colchones. That's because, yeah, I'm not in Mexico anymore. I left a month ago, actually. A month ago today. Crazy. Time flies when you're lying in bed watching cat videos. <laughs> anyway, as I said, it's a sit down talking video with some shots over the top. I did a video many moons ago or more accurately, four months ago, in Durango, in Northern Mexico, called First Impressions of Northern Mexico. And yes, you guessed it. Today is Final Impressions of Northern Mexico. Obviously, there are going to be some things that I'm going to refer to that I mentioned in that video, so you can check out the original video somewhere up above. And yes, I look a bit like Commander Riker from Star Trek The Next Generation now. Brilliant. So on that note, let's get going. Of course, the point of this video is to encourage you to consider Northern Mexico as a possible travel destination for the future, rather than only considering areas in the south or beach locations, areas with a lot of colonial architecture, because there is a lot more to Mexico than that. I know I'm a little bit biased having spent four months there, but I really do think Northern Mexico has an immense amount to offer. And I'm going to go through seven points which will hopefully help you in learning more about Northern Mexico. I'm going to start off by telling you a bit of a story about why I went to Northern Mexico in the first place. Let's go back to April 2021. I was in Iztapalapa in Mexico City. I was about four months into a five month YouTube break, which by the way was the best thing I ever did. And I went to Guanajuato or Guanajuato, as an expat gringo would say. I don't know why I'm taking the piss. I can't pronounce it either. And I went to Guanajuato because I wanted to go somewhere that I was comfortable with, somewhere that I'd been before. I'd been there twice before. And I felt like it would just be an easy option, you know, get some work done, easy life, lovely. But about two weeks into it, I was sitting on my step. This is why this story is called the Guanajuato step storyline. I was sitting there, right, having my cafe ole in the morning, which is like a morning ritual. Go to Oxo, drink it, have a fag cigarette and I suddenly realized I had an epiphany right that I was miserable and I couldn't work out why but then very quickly I did realize why it's because I was in a place that I didn't find interesting challenging in terms of travel and coming out of my comfort zone so that's exactly what I decided I needed to do I got on a bus via Zacatecas to Durango northern Mexico had always been on my list since like day one right but I never felt I was in the right position to do it in terms of my Mexico experience if you know what I mean. So off I went off to Durango. Now over the course of the next four months I spent that time in Durango, Cahuila, Sinaloa and Chihuahua. Yes Chihuahua and Cahuila were really only one city but Durango and Sinaloa I explored much more in detail. Which brings me on to my first point. See what I did there? Point number one is don't underestimate the size of the states in northern Mexico. Obviously, I didn't go to northern Mexico thinking, oh, I can just pop down the road and I'll be in another state. I knew they were ginormous. I knew the travel distances would be absolutely immense. And they were. But I've got to say, I think they were larger than I did anticipate in terms of time, particularly. Yes, you can travel to places on buses, of course, wonderful Mexican buses going between city to city and smaller buses as well, local, urban, suburban buses that you can use to get to small towns and Pueblo Mexico's. The time was ridiculous. You know, I'd have to take a whole day out to get a bus, if you know what I mean. Um, so if you are thinking of going to Northern Mexico, just make sure you plan in terms of your time, actually maybe double the amount of time that you think you're going to need. One thing I would say, an amazing tip, but not really, this isn't exactly an invaluable mind-blowing tip, but just rent a car. I couldn't because my license was in Poland. It's a long story. Of course, if you're from a state like Texas or something, New Mexico, you can drive into Mexico, probably. I don't know how that works. And use your own car. But it will just make your life so much easier, particularly if you want to visit places that are much more off the beaten track. For example, Puente de Oela, Mapimi, Mexiquillo. Where else? Lots of other places I went to that proved to be incredibly <laughs> difficult. It was like... A ridiculous conundrum every time around how I was going to get to these places. If you haven't got a car, think outside the box. You know, be prepared to hitchhike. Be prepared to 
speak to randoms and say, are you going in that direction? Do you mind if I jump in? Yeah, that's fine, amigo. Look at Facebook. As much as I hate Facebook and I haven't used it since like 2012, I mean, who does now? except like Karens that complain in Walmart. I found a guy on there that was a taxi driver in, um, where was he? In Torreon, that was it. And he took me to Puente de Abuela. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have been able, to, been able to film that video. So you do have to think outside the box. Yeah, you might have to risk your safety at times, jumping into backs of cars and stuff. But if you're happy to do that, and I am, then that's great. Just don't walk 17 kilometers to Pizza de los Arcos. The less said about that, the better. <laughs> Point number two is a point I mentioned in the first video about the fact that there just isn't any useful information online about Northern Mexico. I think as I went along, I realized that there actually kind of was some information, but the problem is a lot of that information details the key destinations or the key attractions that you can see in places. Northern Mexico is one of those areas of the world where the only way of knowing things is by speaking to locals because those locals are the only ones that are going to know those things that's why it was such a challenge that's why it was tough and difficult at times but i'm glad that i kind of in the end kind of developed relationships with people and was able to find some really hidden gems in certain places the thing i will say i think thank you to all of you who have taken the time to leave comments in all of these Mexico videos. We've got this incredible resource now. So you can just go into any of my old videos, read the comments, and you've got an endless list of suggestions and recommendations from locals. So that's bloody brilliant. Onto the third point, which could be incredibly controversial. The food is the best in Mexico. And I can already hear the keyboards going, it's not the best. Oaxaca is the best. Whatever. I've been to 20 states, right, in Mexico. I haven't just been to Cancun. And obviously I've eaten food in all of those. <laughs> so I have some degree of experience. And I've got to say, in my experience, my opinion, Northern Mexican food is the best. Obviously, taste in anything is subjective. We're all entitled to our opinions, Karens. Um, <laughs> but for me, I felt Northern Mexican food was the best because it just had this extra degree of flavour. It was so flavoursome. And it's I think with food, you can have food that's like, yeah, it's great, it's lovely, but then you can have orgasm food, as I'm calling it. <laughs> um, that food that kind of gives you that, oh my actual Jesus, what just happened feeling. And even places that you might not think would be amazing, like that mercado I went to in Gomez Palacio that had the gorditas discada, oh my God, and asada roja, or is it rojo? I never remember. I, I know some people said, oh, well, they're not the best gorditas, but as I said, best is subjective. I enjoyed them and that's the main thing. Don't let people tell you like, oh, you must go to this food place because it's the best. Make up your own mind. We all have different tastes, you know? There are other lots of, other lots of, there are other great dishes in Northern Mexico. Of course, lonches. I know there are tortas elsewhere in Mexico, but pan frances, um, hello, that's the best bread ever. And it's, what's the word? I can't think of it. It comes from, originates in Torreon, right? And it's just magical. You have molitas in Durango. You have, oh, there's just so much. And I could go on forever about food in Northern Mexico. The thing I will say about food is arena, flour tortillas. Does anyone watch Mexican moms on, I think it's a Facebook thing where they, there's these two women. Um, I think they might live in the US, but they'd like try out food from certain places. And they did one, I think it was a Taco Bell one. And one of the ladies was saying, oh, flour tortillas, that's not Mexican. Clearly she was from the South. But there is the tortilla line, which I kind of christened. Did that, did that exist already or did I make it up? I don't know. It's kind of between Durango and Sinaloa, I would say. Anything South is corn, but anything North is flour. And I must admit, I'm not the biggest fan of flour tortillas because they kind of remind me of you know, when you go to a Mexican restaurant in some random country, but it's not Mexican, it's Tex-Mex. Fajitas, chimichangas, what the fuck are they? Pardon my French. And it just gives me that feeling of lower quality. And I read in the comments of this video that a lot of people were angry that she said that, well, flour tortillas aren't Mexican. But the thing is, apparently, the reason they aren't eaten a lot in the North is because corn doesn't grow well in deserts. Mind blown, right? So. You know, flour tortillas, as much as I'm not keen on them, they are equally part of Mexican cuisine as corn tortillas. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise, Hans. <laughs> okay, I've decided to put points four and five together into one. And that is 
no history, nothing to do, bollocks. There is an incredible amount of history in northern Mexico just because an area of Mexico doesn't have those houses daubed with bright colours, colonial history or Aztec and Mayan ruins or sexy beach resorts doesn't mean that it's any less than anywhere else. Northern Mexico has a crazy history. There was a story arc stretching from Concordia to Matamoros, the whole French thing. I didn't know anything about the French invasion of Sinaloa and northern Mexico, but I did gradually as I went along. There were murals in Concordia that were telling the story of some of it, all the way up to Matamoros where there was that cave where Benito Juarez hid the National Archives during that attempted invasion that didn't really work out. Napoleon, Habsburg, someone. I can't remember now. Watch the old videos. Also in Torreon, you know, Georges, hola amigo, the guy who showed me around the theatre told me more information about northern Mexico than I could ever learn from anyone or anything anywhere in such a short time. Arab history, Chinese history, there's a mosque, there's a temple, you name it. It's insane. And when we think about Durango, things to do, and I'll use that as an example because I spent the most time there, you've got Puente de Abuela, as I mentioned before, the bridge with the mine, you've got Mexiquillo, which was completely shocking. I was shocked as an expat gringo traveling in Mexico when really they're just sitting in one place. Um, <laughs> you had those rock formations. It was like another planet. You had millions of different landscapes in such a small area. You had Nombre de Dios, El Saltito, the Can Can place, eating scorpions. The list goes on. I won't mention the pizza again. <laughs> Point number six is the people. And I know I banged on about this before, but it's true. The people in northern Mexico are my kind of people. They're straightforward. Maybe they're all Aries. Maybe everyone has Aries as their zodiac sign. They're straightforward. They don't take no shit. You know, people walk past you and don't say anything. It was like a relief <laughs> that I didn't have to do that anymore. One thing I think about northern Mexican people is that even in terms of among Mexico, they're misunderstood, people from the north or maybe seen as lesser than people from the South. This is definitely getting controversial. And it's similar in the UK, you know, someone from the South like me will look down on people from the North for no good reason. And I think it's the same in Mexico. When it comes to Mexico, I do sometimes feel as though there's a level of insecurity because, you know, people think that, oh, Mexico is so hard done by, it's had a difficult past, it's seen as negative, it's seen as dangerous and all that. And as a result of that, I think anyone that goes to Mexico, particularly in terms of YouTube, feels like they need to be overly positive all the time and that any ounce of negativity will be chastised and you'll be crucified for your honest opinion. But I feel like people in Northern Mexico don't give a shit about that. They're like, just be honest. That's what we're like. Whereas people in the South seem to be so protective over this polishing a turd lark, you know? The whole painting of buildings to make areas look nicer than they actually are. Okay, my last point, point number seven, is about safety in Mexico. Those dreaded three words. You might remember in the first Durango video, I specifically said that I wasn't gonna talk about safety in Mexico ever again. And I don't think I did until now, right? Because I see, personally, safety as a non-issue. Safety is not about the city or country you're in generally. Safety is about you, your behaviour. It's your responsibility to look after yourself wherever you are in the world. It's not the country's responsibility. People say to me, oh, London must be so safe. But if I'm going to walk down a dark alleyway at one o'clock in the morning with a Rolex watch on display and I walk past a gang of junkies, I'm going to get stabbed. That Rolex is going to get robbed and it's going to be sold for crack in a millisecond. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. It's about your behaviour and your common sense. However, there is something that has come up in a lot of comments recently, which is an amazing point, extremely valid. I absolutely welcome these points from women. I'm not female, despite some people thinking I am a transsexual. Um, I have a penis, by the way, a real one. <laughs> yeah, obviously I can't comment on that because I'm not female and I wouldn't want to even try to do that because, you know, mansplaining. <laughs> <laughs> what do I know? I need a woman here to talk to me about their experiences of safety in, in Mexico. Maybe I'll do something like that in the future. But of course, for me, it's not so much of an issue. I can walk down a street anywhere and pretty much know that I'll be fine. But obviously for a woman, it's more than likely going to be different. There are many 
more risks for a woman. And I think that's definitely something worth considering. One reason I probably haven't spoken about it before is that pretty much since I started this channel five years ago, my audience has been predominantly male. I think it's about 75% male. Where are you ladies? Hello Hans. <laughs> Oh, I just spat all over the table. Yeah, so safety in Northern Mexico is a non-issue for me, but it might not be for you. You know, we have different risk tolerances. That's what someone said in the comment, and I thought that was great in two words. We all have a different tolerance to risk, and that's true. But I never felt unsafe in Northern Mexico. I think the fact that I can kind of get by with Spanish helped. The fact that I was male, the fact that I had, well, I was going to say dark hair, I had red hair for the entire time in Mexico. You know, I didn't completely look like someone from out of Mongolia, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, safety, just think about it. What does safety mean to you? What is your risk tolerance when it comes to safety? I didn't find northern Mexico any more dangerous than anywhere else in the south. Lovely. Now, overall, my time in northern Mexico was brilliant. It was probably my most valuable experience I've had in Mexico to date in like seven trips now I've been there. The purpose of the videos I made this year, kind of half intentionally, half unintentionally, were all about showing real life in Mexico, the hardworking nature of 99% of Mexico, because I'm sure there are some that are not like that. You know, harsh conditions, hot weather, you know, doing whatever it takes to get by in life. And I think these videos showed that. And this is difficult for me to say, but I have imposter syndrome, as probably all of us do. You know, everything is bad, nothing is ever good enough. But I'm quite proud of the videos I made this year. Yes, I just said that. Um, and I'm really glad I did, because it was a valuable experience. And I want to leave you with a wonderful comment, which sums up everything in this video. I should have said it at the beginning. I'll put it on the screen and I'll read it out. I really appreciate that you have visited the North. In general, we are an underflown region. The centralism of the Republic makes people believe in the collective imagery that we Northerners have no cultural value or history just because we do not have hundreds of dancers with costumes of thousands of colors, or we do not have millions of indigenous customs. We are as Mexican as those from the South and we have nothing to do with the Aztecs, nor do we want to. We have our customs, our way of doing things, our accent, and of course, interesting places and nature, despite the fact that they are not tropical beaches that everyone by force relates to Mexico. I'll leave that with you. That completely sums up everything. I replied to that comment and said, there's nothing else I could add. It sums it up completely. I've got no more words to that. It makes me quite emotional, that comment. That's Northern Mexico. More than likely, I will be back in Mexico in 2022. I hope this chair hasn't been squeaking throughout. That's going to really annoy everyone. Thanks for watching this series. Of course, coming up will be videos from Serbia and beyond. Um, I'm going to do an update video, probably. That'll be up next. Right, so uh, see you soon. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.